Now one of the main experiments on board the NASA InSight lander is a radio science experiment and it's going to be trying to determine how exactly Mars travels through outer space. Now in this video we're going to discuss some of the basic science behind how this experiment works, what we plan on getting out of it, and the overall purpose of this experiment. So let's talk about that. So to begin, the radio science experiment actually has a name. It's called RISE, and that's short for the Rotation and Interior Structure Experiment. Now ultimately, what RISE is going to be trying to do is measure how much the planet Mars is wobbling in its orbit. Now a good way to think about this is if you were to take a water balloon that's just filled with water and try to spin it on a smooth surface. Ultimately, it's not going to spin really well. It's going to slosh around and stop pretty quickly. Whereas if you took a ball that was about the same size and spun that, it could spin for a very long time time. Therefore, determining whether something is a liquid or a solid on the inside can determine how much it may wobble in its orbit in terms of a planet. So ultimately, by detecting how much it's wobbling, we can see how much of what's going on beneath the surface is actual liquid. So one of the first things we need to do is relate this motion to what happens on planet Earth. And in fact, Earth wobbles once every 18 years due to our tidal effect with the moon. But Mars wobbles once every Martian year. But we don't know exactly how much Mars is wobbling. So if we determine how much is wobbling, then we can understand the source of that strange motion. So how exactly is the RISE experiment going to be able to determine this? Now RISE will be able to detect this wobbling motion by seeing its exact position in outer space. Not just on Mars, but in all of outer space. Now you might think, that's pretty crazy, how is it going to be able to do that? It's actually going to be using a concept that's very well known called the Doppler effect. Now before we get into the experiment itself, let me first explain the Doppler effect. Have you ever heard an ambulance or a police siren coming towards you and then traveling away? When it's coming towards, it sounds as a much higher pitch, but then when it's going away, it sounds as if it has a much lower pitch, which is kind of strange why it changes. But when it's traveling towards you, what ends up happening is the sound waves are being compressed, and therefore you observe it as a higher pitch. Whereas when it's traveling away from you relatively, then it's being expanded and you hear it as a lower pitch. Or the wavelengths are actually changing compared to the source of the sound and where you you are relative to its velocity. So you might say there's no sound in space, so we can't actually use the Doppler effect. But the Doppler effect actually works for any type of wave, including light. So theoretically, let's say someone had a green flashlight that was emitting green light at you, and they decided to run away from you at a speed very close to the speed of light. Ultimately, what you would end up seeing happening is the green light actually change from yellow and red. So why what does that happen? It's the same concept to why you hear a different pitch when the ambulance is coming towards or away from you. The wavelength of the wave is actually changing. So the wavelength of the light when an object is traveling really fast away from you is also changing. So ultimately you perceive a different color. Now you might think, this is impossible, that doesn't work for light, there's no way. And the reason that we can't really comprehend it as well is because it doesn't happen in our everyday lives. But does it? It actually does. If you've ever used your phone to track your position or your location using Google Maps or all these different methods, ultimately what it's doing is connecting to GPS satellites that are using the Doppler effect to determine your exact location. The GPS constellation, which is 24 different satellites in orbit around Earth, what happens is your phone sends a signal to one of those satellites, or actually a lot of those satellites, and then depending on how much time it takes to get to that satellite, and also what the wavelength it receives, will determine your exact position here on Earth. So now let's jump back to RISE. Mars doesn't have a 24 satellite GPS constellation around it, therefore we can't use its GPS to determine its location, but rather if we're going to send a signal from Earth. Since we know Earth's orbit, Mars' orbit really well, and InSight's exact position on the surface of Mars, if we send a transmission to the RISE mission or the RISE experiment, and then it sends the same signal back, then we can do a lot of math on the wavelength of what we receive, how long it takes, and all this information to determine InSight's exact position in outer space to a few centimeters. Yeah, you heard me right, a few centimeters. That's pretty insane when on average the distance between Earth and Mars is 225 million kilometers. We're able to get that accurate. So ultimately what we're able to determine on the variation of InSight's position with respect to Mars's overall orbit is how much the planet is going to wobble. 
Now, by taking the information we learned from RISE and combining that with some of the other experiments on board the InSight lander, we'll be able to improve our understanding of how much of Mars's core is actually liquid. Now, this isn't the only thing RISE is actually going to be recording. It's also going to be able to tell fluctuations in carbon dioxide deposits on the northern and lower poles of the planet, mainly because Mars has seasons just like Earth does, so we'll be able to determine how much carbon dioxide is going from the North Pole to the South Pole or vice versa. And overall, this will be able to tell us more about the climate of Mars as a whole and what happens as it goes throughout its seasons. Now, unlike some of the other experiments on board the InSight lander, RISE is just sitting on the lander itself and it doesn't have to be placed on the surface of Mars. Therefore, we can start receiving data from it as soon as possible. But we probably won't see any conclusions because we're going to be slowly detecting the change in InSight's position over time. So it's going to take a lot of data points in order to have a final conclusion on how much Mars is actually wobbling. But if you have any questions about the RISE experiment, be sure to let me know in the comments below and I'll try my best to answer them. If you enjoyed this video, consider leaving a like and if you enjoy this kind of content, consider subscribing to my channel. If not, thank you for watching and I hope to see you in the next one.